we certainly appreciate this opportunity and the invitation uh, for this uh, Institute of Cultural Diplomacy and what you all have been doing in terms of cross-continental cooperation. Very, very, very important uh, topic. What I want to do is uh, take, take you all back uh, to the beginning and uh, for our common, common, common entrance and then bring us forward uh, to see where we are. We know prior to the current universal order, you know, when we look at scripture, all, all major scriptures uh, on up to the Quran, uh, they said that this great universe in its beginning, it was not in a state of quiet and peace. In fact, they say it was in uh, turmoil, noise, confusion, and some translations in previous scripture says violent commotion and uh, explosion. And then because, you know, science now, they speak about the Big Bang, et cetera, to verify this. But that initial state, the, the, the scriptures tell us that God didn't want it to stay the way it was initially. So he wanted there to be order and unity. So he called to creation. It says, come ye together, willingly or unwillingly. And the creation responded, we come willingly. And so when order and unity came into the chaos, everything received its attention. You know, the bodies were given their freedom, their freedom to have their space, their freedom to have their orbits, and to have their place in this beautiful picture of the universe. Everything got its particular respect. It was given its freedom to operate, to be in space, the space in this whole picture. So it continues to go on. It began to have its existence. It began to have its functionality uh, in, this, in this new picture. And then there was order. And then only then was there peace in the heavens. Therein is a universal logic for human life and progress. We see that as a picture that we are given in terms of what must be done on earth. In fact, we even make that reference uh, currently now referring to scripture. We say thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So these are, these are statements uh, that we make. So God is telling us that when we can respect our sister nations, brother and sister nations, as we respect ourselves, when we can give them the same freedom to have their own orbits and not impose our ideology on them, etc. And that so as long as they support the order and the peace for mankind, we should tolerate their differences. Even their differences in ideology. We wouldn't want uh, even to see the United States impose its ideology on others. You see? That, that, for me, I believe is the foundation when we start to speak about cultural diplomacy and the establishment of global peace and stability. This kind of mind, you know, when we look at it, it accepts that everything that God created is created for dignity and it can have it. And we're to approach, the mic going out on me. And it's life in its shared freedom space. So God wants us to see again that we should come together. It's very important for human life to come together to learn from the universal order, to come together, respect each other, show we appreciate each other, show we appreciate our differences. And only then can we give the kind of attention that we need to deal with the problems, many of which have been human produced problems that we're seeing all across the globe right now. And, and the, 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 the globe has, as we know now, has become one. You know, there's nothing that can happen around the world now that the whole world didn't have it in a matter of seconds. You know, we're all under this one big roof, you know. And when they give statistics, you have such as the World Health Organization. Uh, they're looking at these statistics, these dynamics, and they're saying that 260 million youth are exposed to violence worldwide. So that affects every one of us on the planet, you know. Uh, they're talking about women. One third of all women on the planet are exposed to violence, et cetera. So all these different things that are going on, climate change, et cetera, that we, can, that we can go into, that we see affecting the planet, that we have a shared responsibility to do something about it. Because who is inheriting this earth? 
Who is inheriting this shared freedom space that we all have? It's our children. Our children. And when we look at children, this is to take us back to our, to our, to our common origin. All of us come here the same way, with the same, we speak a universal language, you see? But we can't tell from that universal language the identity of that child. When we go to a nursery and we look in the nursery, we can just hear sounds. The language is universal. We don't know if it's coming from a Japanese baby. We don't know if it's coming from an African baby. We don't know if it's coming from a Chinese baby. There's a universal language. And in that communication, firstly, they're not aware of themselves as a Japanese, as an African, or religious labeled Muslim, Christian. They're not aware of themselves of that. You see, all that comes later. God wants us to go back and look at our first life as our starting point. And we know this first creation that we're, we're speaking of, now science has, has already proven uh, that the human, human life, scripture says this, that the human was created on the sixth day, but science says that human were the last of creation. We come last, you know. Earth is, they say, 4.6 billion years old, and it's been around a long time, and then we come. But when we look at our, our coming into existence, even the scriptural presentation of that says that what God created, when he speaks about creation in period, in his, in his beginning stages, he said it was excellent, it was good. This was the beginning of creation. And that goes on, and we know the six days, previous scripture says six days, Quran says six days, and it says on the sixth day, then there is man. Man on that day had an identity. It was not a racial identity. It was not an ethnic identity. It was not a national identity, but it was the first identity that we come in contact with. And, it, and that tells us that that identity has to be and is strong enough because it was the first identity given to us by the one that created us because we didn't create ourselves, that that's the most important identity and basis for the start of our communication. The labels come later. We were, we were human. That's our common identity, our common origin. And from that life, from that first one, comes the many wonderful, beautiful, diverse expressions of human life. And, 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 and really, in that picture, it tells us that human being, mankind, we can never come into our true humanity until we appreciate, not just tolerate, but appreciate all of these human beings, this diversity in the human family. And we can go on to say, in the human family of Adam. So God wants to see this, us to see this picture, you know. Uh, and we have shared responsibility to look at the intrinsic nature of every human being. It's always to have that to be our starting point. And God is inviting us. He said our common origin comes from one. You know, we, 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 we talk about universal. Universal. Uh, uni is one we know. Verse we know. Is that that should be read and communicated. And we have soul, S-O-U-L, we say universal, so one. We all come from that one, that one soul. So we are, that's a message for us to speak to the soul of the human being, not the label of the human being, as our starting point. And then we, once we speak from that point, then we can begin to build and bring in what our needs are based on our labels, national labels, you see, ethnic labels, et cetera. Because we have a starting point, a common point to begin communication. This is what God is, is, is showing us. And he lets us know that the creation is really a sacred partner with mankind. And the creation itself brings us to right conclusions. You know, we, we, we now, God has evolved us. Man has been evolved now and we have the scientific mind. And God tells us to take and use that scientific mind and go back and look at your creation. Look at before your creation and look at what has been on earth. And we know when we use that scientific mind to go find what has been on earth, we begin to find the T-Rex, the mammoth, the saber-toothed tiger, all of these massive, you know, domineering creatures. But they are all extinct now. But as evolution would have it, they existed at one time. And God, is he, he, he had that there, and now he evolved man to come into a, a scientific mind where he can go and see what was before him and to see how he has evolved. And God is showing us 
that that's not what he wants. He's showing us that he says, now he tells us, he says, now look, he said, when you discover what you've unearthed, now look at your frames. We were talking about babies, but he said, look at your frames. You know, look at, he says, look at your fingernails. Look at your teeth. Say, look at how fragile your body is. So he wants us to see, he said, he's evolving a, the more compassionate creature. You see, to say what he wants for mankind. You see? So when we look at them, even the primitive man, he's more vicious looking, more rough looking. But we, we've come to a, com to, a, to a terminology that we use for ourselves now. We say mankind to speak to really what should drive our communication, what should drive our relationships, what should drive us to the table. You see? First of all, on the, on the basis of kindness and compassion. So we can, we can look at that massive body as God really saying what he doesn't want is hard power. That's the dominant. That's the hard power. He said we should, we should look always to use soft power. This is, what he, this is what he is ushering forth in the human being. And then he tells the human being that we, we, we are equated in scripture to, to plants. To plants. And plants, the way they get started out, they start, you know, from their seed, etc. And they first produce a soft uh, the meat is soft. And then, and then you find the heart becomes around to protect it. But get God again is telling us in terms of life. So again, our life also comes here. We are fragile. We're soft. We need people to take care of us, to protect us. And then we become stronger. So God always said, what is the, what is the starting point for relationships? This is how relationships start for us, you know, from a compassionate setting. Human beings connecting. Life is based on bonding. There is no life if there's no bonding. There has to be some coming together in order for life to be produced. So we will never be able to produce life by staying away from each other and not addressing the concerns of human life. You see? But if we have this starting point, God says, that in the development of creation, outside of yourself and in yourself, he's saying that the natural causes, all of these things are on the side of the peacemakers. The peacemakers, those who are seeking to establish the peace and the harmony uh, in life. You know, we would look at the animal, the human being. God shows us in terms of being the last, we had to compete in the animal, in the animal world. But that drove human beings together to get away from animals. Now, I know some will say that now the safest place is among animals because in the cities they're so rough right now. But we're looking at, again, how God has evolved us, you know. There were animals in the wild, and we began to compete with them. But the animals in the wild, they're, they're, they're free, but freedom is not protected. So we're looking at how they've evolved. It, 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 we, we, we have the expression, there is survival of the fittest. That's the law. That's the law among the wild. So, so although where we are now, we are, we are thousands of years away from the animal law, you see. Uh, these conditions that we find ourselves in, they can form in this shared freedom space that we're in right now uh, that can take us back to animal existence. We, 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 though we say we're thousands of years away from that, we're really not that far from that because we do see sometimes people who are in the body of a human being begin to behave like animals to the point that we have to say that's inhumane, that's uncivilized, because they're in human form, but their, their performance is not performing as a human being. And again, the terminology that we have, that we've evolved for ourselves, we know human coming from humus, you know, the warm soil, again, speaking to soft, you know, we know this, uh, these summits are centered around diplomacy. And we, we are always trying to promote this, this, this soft usage of soft power, uh, you see. So here is another, another example from us in terms of what we should be doing uh, to, to, to come together, to try to cooperate with each other uh, in the spirit of the life that we're in. Now, God takes us back. We, we, God says in everything, man has to apply his intelligence. So we always have something to look at for direction for our life. There's the natural creation. And then in terms of how we're socialized, 
in a society. We are under one roof. In that roof, there's an authority. There's probably mama, there's daddy. And then there are the children. The children have their rooms. They eventually have their own rooms. And they have responsibility for their rooms. In that house, that home, in the terms of the shared, shared freedom space, they have responsibility for certain areas in that house under that particular roof. And they begin to be protective of that. But, but now let's take that and look at, let's go outside of that now. We are all under this one roof, under one sky. And we have our rooms under that. And we have authorities over these different rooms. But again, God is telling us that nobody owns the whole house. It's the responsibility. And the ownership is for everybody. And we have an obligation to make sure that the health of everybody in the house progresses for its betterment. Because if someone is unhealthy in the home, then there's a, there's a possibility that that can contaminate others. It can spill over and begin to affect others, the fevers, etc. So we have an obligation to address what is happening in the whole house because it could affect others. And again, because everything is global now, we are so connected the way God has beautifully connected the human beings. And we're beginning to see this ushering, ushering of the souls of human beings now to, to have freedom, to have freedom of expression, uh, et cetera. And, and, and God wants us to begin to look at power. Look at the power that he has. But God lets us know that he has given us power. You know, we, didn't, we, weren't, born, we weren't born with power. You know, we begin to come into this, our strength, the power of our muscles. They begin to develop to where we can stand and begin to move and begin to lift things. It was difficult even to lift the head of the child. You see, this is how we come here. So God wants us to look at how he has developed us. Look at how the power really uh, has come from him. And he's saying that when you have power, you are supposed to use power the same way power is used when you're in the home. You see? Uh, justly and fairly. This is how God uses it. And he has all the power with care. But that's how a mother is with their child. That's how they use their power. They care for all, just as God cares for all, though he may have to punish some. Just like a mother loves her children, though she may have to punish one. But she does that with care. So that tells us we have to use care in our dealing with each other. These, again, these are messages that we have right before us uh, that God has, has, has given the human being. And we know... Uh, one of the, the definitions they've given uh, for diplomacy, uh, Henry Kissinger, he said, it's the art of restraining power. The art of restraining power. So when you, when you have it, those that have power, those are the ones should be the most mindful of it and should be more merciful of it in terms of how they use power. That's why in, our, in, in the scriptures, in really all the scriptures, God says that his mercy, his compassion prevails over his power, over his wrath. And say he obligates himself to the rule of mercy. He obligates himself to that. So the more power you have, the more power you have, that's an opportunity for you now to listen to be able to be merciful. You see? You can't show mercy if you don't have power. It's incompatible. So this is a, this is a, this is a message uh, for us. And we, 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 we have to begin to connect with, with life, all life, and see human life in the context of just what it is. If we, if we start with what's common, we won't focus on the label first. When we begin to focus on labels, then we see people away from us. You know, in, in our holy book, there's a translation for Christians and Jews as people of the book. But we don't like that translation. And in looking at the Arabic word, Ahil Kitab, it actually is close to family. Family. So really, God is really saying family of the book. Not just people, because people, they, say these, they are away from me. But family, you tend to bring them close. And we, and we as Muslims have to accept that because we are told that all the prophets are brothers. And we're given a picture of Muhammad, peace be upon him, in an extension, meeting the prophets. And he referred to them, all of them, as family members. Family members. 
So that should always be, be the starting point for how we see each other. Because what we see now, when we see atrocities around the world, we want to, to have conversations. Uh, even from America right now, we're looking at even the serious situation. Uh, it's like those people are having problems. You know, why should we be in, involved with those people, you see? But that's why it's important to put the human face on it, the human expression, the human piece on it, so we see our humanity. And we respond, these are human beings. And when we, when we allow atrocities to happen to one human being, we begin to weaken our own self because we're all a part of each other. And the more we ignore something that's happening, the more we become weaker and weaker, and then we can't move. And that's why we see sometimes people can't speak. They can't say anything. They have allowed it to go on so long that they have become so weak that they can't even give off an expression. That's why God, he is the one to help us to get back into how we're supposed to move. The human being is never uh, supposed to just stand still. We're created to stand and move. And our standing is on the basis of our common strength. All of us have this common strength, and that's our soul. None of us can stand without a soul. That's the common uh, strength that all of us have. None of us are independent of that, you see? And, we, and God says to us in, in, in Scripture that we are created from one soul. There are many souls, but we all come from one soul. Just as there, there's one that we see as our parent that we all come from uh, as, as well. So that's the commonality and that's the strength that we have and we must exert that soul. Because when something happens, really, when that becomes weak, just like 9-11, for instance, regardless of what happened, everybody, regardless of what your labor was, as members of this society and from around the world, regardless of what your nationality was, you felt the same. Your soul felt the same. You hurt. You hurt. It had nothing to do with what you called yourself. It had nothing to do with what your color was. You hurt. You see? So this is, this, is, this, this is what keeps us human, connecting with our vital life, the essence of our life. We're, we're, we're invisible, and we're visible. And the, God shows us what's more important is what we can't see. The abstract is more important than the visible. So we, that, that tells us that we are always, when, we, when we're trying to build relationships, we are always supposed to try to find out what we can't see. Not just go on what we can see. Because that might not be the most powerful thing driving what we see. It's what we can't see. I'm speaking to you now, but it's the invisible that you can't see. But it's expressing itself through the visible. But if the invisible, the strength of me, my soul leaves me, then this strength, my strong muscles, this, this frame will fall. It will fall down. You see? This is, this is natural communication. Uh, for us. As we get ready to conclude, again, who's inheriting this world? It's our children. And they don't come here with all of these identities that we have. They come here human. They come here pure, innocent, loving, ready to receive love, care, and help. And they're ready to give help. That's the nature. That's why children want to always help be helpful. They want to help mama. They want to help daddy. This is the nature of the human being. So this tells us this is how, if we want to get movement to, for reconciliation, this is how our spirit has to be. This is how our nature has to be. You know, there's, a, there's the book, The Secret of Bees. Uh, there's a statement there that I think that uh, really represents a statement of cultural diplomacy. They say it in the statement. They say, if you need something from somebody, if you need something from somebody, Always give that person a way to hand it to you. You see? And to me, that's, a, that's an excellent, excellent definition uh, when we get to the point of what we say about cultural diplomacy. Let me end this with a story. This story is called The Mystical Pebbles. And it goes back into uh, the desert. One night, a group of Bedouins were preparing to retire for the evening when suddenly they were surrounded by a great light. They knew they were in the presence of a celestial being. With great anticipation, they awaited for this heavenly message that they thought was going to be of great importance, you know. And it was just for them. So they were waiting. And finally, the voice spoke. And the voice said, gather as many pebbles as you can. 
Put them in your saddlebags. Travel a day's journey, and your destination tomorrow night will find you glad and will find you sad. So after hearing this story, and then the light departed, the better ones, they began to share their disappointment. They began to share their anger. They, would, they, they said, I mean, they expected some revelation, some great universal truth in terms of how they could create wealth and help and health and purpose for humanity. So they began to look at it as just this is a menial task. But they began to travel. And in their traveling, they began to, they thought about what was said. So they grabbed, they picked up a couple of pebbles. And they kicked some around. They picked up a few, put them in their saddlebags. And they traveled a day's journey. And then that night, while making their camp, they reached into their saddlebags. And then they discovered every single pebble that they picked up had become a diamond. They were glad they had diamonds. But they were sad that they had not gathered more pebbles. You know? So we, we, this is, we, we should trust what you are receiving from the light from within, you know, for, for, for speaking from you. There's a light in every human being that we see in that newborn, in that child as they're growing, that expression. Trust the light. It stays with us. It's all around us. It's communicating. Some don't trust it, so we don't get far. It's the best aspirations from your nature, the best aspirations in yourselves. We're supposed to listen. It's showing you what you need to change. It's showing you this, that you need to change to, 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 to become better, to have better attitudes about establishing and building and bridging relationships. The, the, the valuable diamonds, these were the diamonds of cultural diplomacy. And if you use them, if you use that first, this element, again, uh, I'm, I'm also classifying this as soft power, you'll be glad. The leaders will be glad, and they'll be pleased, and they'll be satisfied. And if you don't, you'll be sad. Thank you for listening. Thank you for the time. Thank you for the invitation. Assalamu alaikum. Peace be unto you.